Uh, good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, my sincere thanks to Dr. Bakshi Bhai for inviting me to this prestigious conference, uh, dear chairpersons and, and friends. I would be talking about a clinical topic, uh, non-diabetic nephropathy in diabetic patients when to suspect. Okay. So, dear friends, it is a well-known fact that diabetic nephropathy, a uh, leading uh, microvascular complication of diabetes, is a devastating complication of diabetes, leading to a lot of morbidity and one of the important cause of anti-stage renal disease worldwide. In fact, diabetic nephropathy is a chronic condition developing over many years and it is characterized by typical clinical course, the biochemical abnormality and histological abnormality. Say there is a gradually increasing urinary albumin excretion accompanied by the ri rising blood pressure. There is a decline in GFR. And once you, while you make a diagnosis of diabetic nephropathy, obviously you have to rule out other non-diabetic uh, renal diseases like uh, uh, urinary tract infection and so many other conditions which can develop in a diabetic patient. And commonly diabetic nephropathy is associated with development of other microvessel complication, especially diabetic retinopathy, which is well documentable, well, you know, uh, clinically uh, characterized. So before I talk about uh, non-diabetic nephropathy, I'll give you an overview of uh, uh, some of the clinical points which will help us in differentiating diabetic nephropathy from non-diabetic nephropathy. So non-diabetic kidney disease is uh, basically a kidney disease developing in a diabetic patient independently from the diabetes related to diabetic factors. It's a common disease uh, in a type 2 diabetic patient. And why we want to differentiate, why we want to diagnose uh, non-diabetic renal disease in a diabetic patient is because the case has got a significant impact on prognosis and treatment, which is totally different from diabetic nephropathy. In fact, non-diabetic renal diseases, when picked up early in the course, they have a better prognosis and they are treatable in contrast to diabetic kidney disease. So, so why we want to uh, you know, uh, make a diagnosis? Here you can see in this particular study, there were three groups uh, characterized in the diabetic patient. One was non-diabetic renal disease in diabetic patient. Other was diabetic nephropathy. And third group was non-diabetic renal disease developed over a background of diabetic nephropathy in diabetic patients. And you can very well see the cumulative renal survival over a period of one year, two year, or three year was much better in non-diabetic renal disease as compared to diabetic nephropathy or patient developing non-diabetic renal disease in diabetic nephropathy over a background of diabetic nephropathy. So we really want to make a early diagnosis to uh, pick up non-diabetic renal disease, which may, uh, a number of them may be treatable and you improve the outcome. So the causes of anti-stage renal disease in diabetic patients, as I mentioned, good number of patients uh, have diabetic nephropathy as a cause of anti renal disease in type 2 patients, while good number of them may have non-diabetic renal disease, which include primary renal diseases, ischemic nephropathy, renal artery stenosis, some embolism, benign nephrosclerosis, or some uh, other renal injuries. So uh, broadly, the, the, the diseases can be various types of uh, glomerular nephritis, say RPGN, chronic interstitial nephritis, acute interstitial nephritis, diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis, focal segmental nephritis, IgA nephropathy, membranous nephropathy, and likewise. So there is a there are a number of conditions which can develop in a diabetic patient and have a different prognosis. Uh, the literature uh, uh, from worldwide shows that almost 30 to 40 percent diabetic patient can have non-diabetic kidney disease. And here I'm sharing some of the Indian studies which have uh, which are based on the BioC proven uh, causes of CKD, which are non-diabetic kidney disease in diabetic patient. And this says that uh, uh, some 25 to 60 percent patients of type 2 patients can have kidney disease not related to diabetic kidney disease. And some for, for 40 to 60 percent patients have diabetic kidney disease. And some one third patient can have uh, non-kidney diabetic disease superimposed on a background of diabetic kidney disease. So the prevalence of NP, NB, KD or non-diabetic kidney disease in a diabetic patient is very high. So before I discuss what are the pointers, what are the clinical markers or what can be the clinical clues to suspect 
a non diabetic kidney disease in a diabetic patient let's highlight let's let's understand uh, and and i would highlight some of the important points of diabetic nephropathy which will help us in differentiating non diabetic kidney disease if you review or you you watch the natural history of diabetic nephropathy a uh, diabetic nephropathy passes through various stages which evolves for a period of years stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 stage 5 and it, at each stage there are biochemical abnormalities there are clinical abnormalities there are histopathological abnormalities say for example in the early stage stage 1 which is hyperfunctioning or hypertrophic kidney which can be well documented in type 1 but not in type 2 characterized by glomerular hyperinfiltration and at this stage blood pressure may be normal and there is no albumin excretion in stage 2 the the there is a there is histopathological changes takes place microalbumin error sets in and some patients can develop hypertension while in stage 3 and 4 there is a clear uh, increasing albumin excretion hypertension sets in and the histopathological changes versus there are typical changes i'll not go into details and and stage renal disease is characterized by hypertension marked uh, there may be albuminuria or albuminuria may vanish by this stage and patient can have frank uh, you know clinical features of uremia some of the patients may not develop albuminuria they directly you know uh, 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 reach the stage of sclerosis and uremia but this is the typical you know stages and we we see in our clinical practice so uh, the progression is important to differentiate it from non diabetic kidney disease and as i mentioned it takes it takes years and the maximum number of cases were seen to progress over a period of 10 to 20 years so there is a progressive decline in the renal function rising hypertension and other features which evolves over a period of 10 to 20 years why so why it is important because any kidney disease which evolves rapidly one should suspect that it may not be diabetic nephropathy similarly there are typical pathological changes which develop in glomeruli of patient of long standing diabetic uh, diabetes before there is appearance of mitral glomeruluria in fact the severity of glomerular damage is proportional to gfr so more the histological changes that there, there is a decline in gfr and this is proportional to degree of hyperglycemia duration of hyperglycemia and other risk factors the main pathological changes in diabetic nephropathy are well known to us the changes in gbm glomerular basement membrane thickening the typical kw lesions diffuse glomerular sclerosis interstitial fibrosis and ultimately hyalinized uh, kidney so dear friends let us understand which are the clinical ind indicators which would suggest non diabetic kidney disease in a diabetic patient there are some well established indicators let's say for example absence of diabetic retinopathy and i'll come to this point again but if there is a there are no changes no other microcell competition especially if retinopathy retina is normal one should uh, look uh, again at the cause of uh, renal disease in a diabetic patient if the duration of Uh, diabetes is short and still patient has progressive kidney disease why should we revise the diagnosis if there are microscopic uh, you know findings like hematuria pyuria cast uh, broadcast or wbc cast then again uh, one should uh, think that it is not diabetic nephropathy then the nephropathy the, there is a bulk proteinuria either rapidly developing nephrotic syndrome or uh, the nephrotic range albuminuria and likewise if the hbmc has been normal patient blood glucose blood pressure has been normal still patient develops kidney disease one should look at the other causes uh, other than diabetic nephropathy there are other potential indicators say if there is no family history of diabetes if the serum protein levels are uh, high high protein high albumin maybe you are dealing with some other type of nephropathy immunoglobulin mediated nephropathy higher hemoglobin higher serum creatinine lower blood pressure i mean the blood pressure is not concomitant with the progression of the diabetic nephropathy and normal complement level and normal igg and normal cystatin c level they suggest that one should revise and one should look at the uh, cause of diabetic uh, you know renal disease other than nephropathy diabetic nephropathy there is a very uh, interesting association of diabetic nephropathy and retinopathy retinopathy has easily recognize, recognizable clinical manifestations and almost always precedes the clinically manifest signs of nephropathy in a given patient there is a strong association between severe retinopathy and presence of kw lesions so according to the guidelines etiology of kidney disease in most patients with diabetes type 
should be ascribed to diabetes if there is a pathological protein proteinuria and heterobiopsy. Simplifying this statement, in a type one patient, if there is a proteinuria and retinopathy, one should presume and one should take it for granted that you are dealing with diabetic nephropathy. Other way around, if there is no retinopathy, no proteinuria, still there is a kidney disease, one should revise that you may be dealing with non-diabetic kidney disease. Uh, so the association of uh, retinopathy uh, with nephropathy is very strong in type one patient. While this is not so in type two. In fact, 50% of patients, 50% uh, of type 2 diabetic patients can have diabetic nephropathy without uh, frank diabetic retinopathy. And 40% of patients with diabetic retinopathy had non-diabetic nephropathy either alone or on a background of diabetic nephropathy. So the association of retinopathy and nephropathy in type 2 is weaker. But still, if you don't find uh, retinal changes, one should revise the diagnosis and one should have a, a second look at the diagnosis of the cause of renal disease. Duration of diabetes is important, I mentioned earlier, because longer the duration of diabetes, more are the chances of uh, an individual developing di diabetic nephropathy. So, uh, in fact, the, uh, based on the literature, the reports even provide a relatively specific time period. And as per the, uh, as per the hints uh, or the recommendation, a duration of diabetes less than five years until, uh, from the time of diagnosis of diabetes, developing kidney disease, uh, one should think of uh, non-diabetic kidney disease. So shorter duration of diabetes, still you have kidney disease, one should think of non-diabetic kidney disease. Again, a duration of more than 10 years is an important indicator of diabetic kidney disease. So longer the duration, one should think in terms of diabetic kidney disease. There are several studies which have you know, individually studied the duration, the glycemic levels, the macroscopic uh, hematuria and other findings with the uh, diabetic kidney disease and non-diabetic kidney disease. To summarize this particular study, which is an Indian study, uh, which uh, highlighted the role of duration of diabetes and absence of retinopathy in type 2 patients. The, the, uh, the conclusion is shorter duration of diabetes and absence of retinopathy, especially when associated with nephrotic proteinuria, strongly predict non-diabetic renal disease. Other, you know, Korean study, uh, uh, where, where correlation of hematuria was studied, and they say that shorter duration of diabetes, absence of retinopathy, and presence of glomerular hematuria were indicators of non-diabetic kidney disease. This is a Chinese study, again, absence of diabetic uh, retinopathy, shorter duration diabetes, lower HBMC were identified as useful clinical predictors of non-diabetic kidney disease, and one should think of no diabetic renal disease. There are no specific uh, biochemical markers of diabetic nephropathy which would differentiate, though there are theoretically PGM, beta, vascular, endothelial growth factor, and other factors which are uh, which are commonly found in, in uh, to be raised in diabetic nephropathy. But albuminuria remains the only biochemical marker acceptable for diagnostic purposes. So one, once you uh, suspect uh, uh, non diabetic renal disease, we should go and perform the, uh, the renal biopsy to establish the diagnosis. So the, again, the, the clinical markers could, could be nephrotic range, proteinuria or nephrotic syndrome without retinopathy, kidney function, portation without retinopathy, nephrotic syndrome with shorter duration, nephrotic syndrome discordant with normal creatinine clearance, acute renal injury, which is unexplained with diabetes, unexplained hematuria and other microscopic features and rapid deterioration of renal function. When you have these, you should go for uh, uh, biopsy. So studies identified that renal biopsy is recommended for patients with type 2 uh, for accurate diagnosis under these circumstances when you have well-established indicators and potential indicators. Before I, I is summarize, and I would say that there are other renal diseases which are more common in diabetic patients. Say, renal artery stenosis is, is twice as common in, in diabetic patient as compared to the background population. And this contributes to uh, uh, kidney disease in diabetic patient. Diabetic patients are more prone to acute kidney injury, maybe, uh, or the AKI, because the pre-renal causes, ATN, or ischemic nephrop nephropathy, and like that. So one should keep in mind, diabetic patients are more prone to acute kidney injury. Well-known fact that diabetic UTI is more common and more severe in type 2 patient, ascending urinary tract infection, upper urinary tract infection, pyelonephritis, acute chronic pyelonephritis, prostatic abscesses, emphysematous cholecystitis, 
pulmonary nephritis, mitral renal abscesses, papillary necrosis, uh, septicemia. They are more common in diabetic patients and may, may contribute to non diabetic renal disease. Bladder dysfunction are again a part of autonomic neuropathy and contribute to nephropathy. Obstructive neuropathy may be because of strictures, calling urethritis, bladder dysfunction, or papillary necrosis are more common in diabetic patients and may contribute to non diabetic renal disease. So, dear friends, uh, I would say that diabetic nephropathy is not the sole renal disease in diabetic patients. Various renal conditions can be found in diabetic patients, either superimposed upon this condition or independent from uh, diabetic related causes. Renal biopsy studies suggest that some 25 to 50 percent of patients, type 2 patients, had glomerular lesions unrelated to or in addition to diabetic nephropathy. In contrast to type 1 diabetes, the incidence of non diabetic renal disease is very high in type 2 patients. So, non diabetic renal disease is more common in type 2 patients. Therapy and prognosis of diabetic nephropathy and non diabetic renal disease are quite different. Therefore, differential diagnosis of these two entities in diabetic patients is of considerable importance as diabetic nephropathy does not have any specific therapy. Identifying these non diabetic renal disease conditions, which will give an opportunity to treat reversible conditions, uh, thereby helping renal protection and improving the outcome. So, I would again uh, uh, emphasize on the clinical markers. If there is no retinopathy in type 1, you should revise. Type 2 patient also, you should look at the retina. Renal disease of shorter duration, less than 5 years, or after 30 years of diabetes, if there is an onset of nephropathy, one should revise. If there is pyuria, hematuria, WBC cast, there is a rapidly progressive proteinuria, rapidly declining renal function, acute nephrotic syndrome, acute renal failure, or macroscopic hematuria, one should look at uh, they like, uh, you know, uh, and suspect that you are not dealing with diabetic nephropathy. Uh, appropriate investigation uh, is required so that you improve the prognosis and outcome in a diabetic patient. Thank you very much.